Dan Radio Style, I hope everybody out there is having themselves an amazing day. An incredible Neville Nugget Goddard goodie. This one is the life changer for you. Are you looking to change your reality, your life? One of the main things that's going to make that difference is by changing the way you look at reality. The way you look at your outer world might be the difference. You're doing all this great inner stuff, but you could be holding some images or views about the outer world that are actually contrary to what seems to be the case. So what I'm asking is I'm asking you to open up your mind a little bit on what physical reality is. Let Goddard and maybe myself take a little walk with you. Let's have a chit chat. Because what he's talking about in the chapter, liquid light, and what I think another great depiction that we've seen in movies would be the Matrix. These are a couple really good kind of mental ideas, mental constructs, visuals that work for what life really is. And it's basically just like a sea of energy, a sea of light, a sea of little ones and zeros. And by the way we focus on something and then have that feeling of it being real, we actually create something within that power, that, that, that pattern. We create something within that stream of ones and zeros, that ocean of energy, and it coalesces into physicality into our lives. It becomes one. When you think of what atoms are, for example, because atoms are what make up everything, right? Microphone, this stuff's all atoms. We are. 98, 9% of an atom is empty space. You've got this teeny little core nucleus, and then you've got these orbital shells that are giantly way out. Like, they're far away, and electrons are teeny, teeny, tiny. So a majority of stuff is actually empty space. So condensing anything into stuff into just some sort of atom is actually very easy to do. But a lot of us see it differently. We think reality is something else, and it's not. It's just a kind of an illusion that gets repainted every day, every, every minute. You can change your reality. And Goddard talks about it in chapter 19 in Your Faith is Your Fortune. Liquid light. In him we live and move and have our being. It's in Acts 17, 28. Psychically, the world appears as an ocean of light containing within itself all things, including man, as pulsating bodies enveloped in liquid light. The biblical story of the flood is the state in which man lives. Man is actually inundated in an ocean of liquid light in which countless numbers of light beings move. So we're essentially we're in this higher energy kind of imagination of the way reality is, right? And we have very dense down in this physical sense, but it's liquid light. All of us are kind of walking around. We're light energy, passing each other and other light energy and enjoying each other's company and passing right by each other and all of that. So the story of the flood is really being enacted today. Man in the ark containing within himself the male-female principles of every living thing. The dove, or idea, which is sent out to find dry land, is man's attempt to embody his ideas. Man's ideas resemble birds in flight, like the dove in the story returning to man without finding a place to rest. Now, one thing that pops up to me here, too, two things. One, if you don't believe or if you don't see your reality come to fruition yet, if your dove doesn't come back with something like land related, right, a, a stub or a twig or something, then it doesn't mean you're not on your way. It doesn't mean that maybe one more day the dove will find. And one thing to keep in mind, too, is the naturalness of what you're seeking is. If you're seeking is many, many, many steps past something that feels real to you. Example, I want to have a relationship with someone. I haven't even talked to them yet. And then I try to imagine being married to them. Well, that's a lot of steps past where you're probably at right now. Like, you should probably try to get a text message, maybe, maybe talk in person once or twice, and then maybe go out on a date. Maybe do that a few times. Maybe, you know, do a number of things that will finally lead up to that point where you're like, yes, this is definitely the person I want to marry. So sometimes keeping naturalness in mind is very key. If man will not let such, such fruitless searches discourage him, one day the bird will return with a green sprig. After assuming the consciousness of the thing desired, he will be convinced that it is so. 
and he will feel and know that he is that which he has consciously appropriated. Even though it is not yet confirmed by his senses, one day man will become so identified with his conception that he will know it to be himself, and he will declare, I am. I am that which I desire to be, or I am that I am. He will find that as he does so, he will begin to embody his desire. The dove, or desire, will find this time dry land, thereby realizing the mystery of the word made flesh. So again, if you are believing the consciousness, realizing this is how manifestation works, this is how physicality happens, it's just liquid light that we're asking to condense, and it's working with us quite happily. So we're like liquid light, condense and create this reality. And liquid light does that for us. And eventually it will get into physical form dense enough that we can see it with our physical senses. But what you're feeling it and creating it with are your spiritual senses. Your sixth senses, if you will. You are feeling senses. The ones that you perceive that you don't physically experience. It's like having someone feel you and say, I love you in their minds when they're a whole state away, but you feel it. Those senses are real. We all have those experiences. So you use those senses to create. And then once finally your physical senses see it, well then, yeah, you can feel pretty much like, yeah, I finally manifested that. But it's happening the second you start the process of feeling it and seeing it and experiencing it like we've been talking a lot about it with the consciousness. So everything in the world is crystallization of this liquid light. I am the light of the world. Your awareness of being is the liquid light of the world, which crystallizes into the conceptions you have of yourself. Meaning, what ye believe of yourself, you will create. Period. Period. If you're trying to create something different, you have to look at your beliefs of yourself, of your world. That's the consciousness we keep talking about. And certainly, by imagining something or someone or a job or whatever your desire is, by imagining it in your hands already, possessed already by you, and what that feels like, that creates consciousness equal to this thing you're creating in your life. You've now gotten your consciousness equal to the thing. So you, now you're attractive to this thing. Now this thing is unfolding from the liquid light. It's condensing, it's crystallizing from the liquid light into your physical reality where you'll physically see it. Your knowledge and awareness of that process, your belief in knowing that this is how the creation happens, the ability to allow ourselves to let it crystallize. These are all the keys because it has to follow our form. That's what we're asking. This is our little made up world. This is our little universe. This is our liquid light to affect. Your unconditioned awareness of being first conceived itself in liquid light, which is the initial velocity of the universe. All things from the highest to the lowest vibrations or expressions of life are nothing more than the different vibrations of velocities of this initial velocity. Gold, silver, iron, wood, flesh, etc. are only different expressions or velocities of this one substance, liquid light. So everything's made of this liquid light. Every element under the sun is just a, a different crystallization of this particular liquid light. So sometimes you have 100 protons. Sometimes you only have 42 protons. I've got a chart over here. Sometimes you've got, what's in sodium? 11 protons, right? And that's sodium. That's all it is. Just a slightly different crystallization creates different elements, which creates different structures. So again, it's just crystallizing into a physical form. All things are crystallized liquid light. The differentiation or infinity of expression is caused by the conceiver's desire to know himself. Your conception of yourself automatically determines the velocity necessary to express that which you have conceived yourself to be. The world is an ocean of light in countless different states of crystallization. 
We're all hanging out in the same place. We're all in different phases, almost even, of the same conception, like the same crystallization. This is our world to create. We share it in components. There's places that are kind of grouped, but then you've got your own internal space. You've got your own internal spaces. Your house, your room, your car, maybe your office. You've got a lot of spaces that are yours. And in these places, we manifest them for ourselves. These are our little manifestations that we show people. It's like we create this wonderful world for ourselves, and then we invite our friends to come and hang out with us in our world. Or we create levels of success so we can then hang and spend time experiencing different aspects of this liquid light world that we share. Long story short, reality isn't so much real as it is our creation and it's constantly being altered. Reality, as we call it, is the liquid light condensed into the way that we believe it should be, the way we accept as normal, the way that we understand things to be, what our consciousness is. All of those things is what our world is right now. The only way to change that is to realize that it obeys us. And it's not an issue of saying, I want it better. It's not the words. It's the energy. It's the consciousness. It's being that which you desire to be. The moment you are it and then accept that that is creation, that it is now crystallizing before you, that eventually soon you'll be pulling it out of the oven and with your physical senses we'll see this dream, this thing you've created. But it's that not believing it's not real until I see it with my physical senses. That has to change. That is not how it works. It starts to become from our spiritual senses, from our sixth senses, and then trickles down from there to our physical senses. It's more real in that etheric standpoint or that energetic standpoint or that liquid light standpoint. It's very real and very pliable at that place. And that is what is meant by you have it now. All we're waiting for is it to crystallize far enough down into physical form so we can see it with our physical eyes. That's the only difference. Stop letting your physical eyes be what tells you what reality is. Reality is what you create, not what your physical eyes see. Your creation will form and coalesce, but it was real way prior to when it finally became physical. Let it unfold. Let it coalesce. Let it crystallize. Let it cook. Your dream is waiting for you. Dan Radio Style.